Duo, two gigs of DDR3 memory, the integrated NVIDIA 9400M graphics, 160 gig hard drive, and all those great features like the long life battery and the SD card slot. At $1499, 2.53 gigahertz, four gigs of memory, 250 gigabyte hard drive. So great configurations. And the new 13 inch MacBook Pro is available today. So that's a 13 inch. That really completes the MacBook Pro family. 13, 15, and 17 inch. New features, all amazing battery life, all backlit keyboards, the ability to expand. And they start at just $1199, $1699, and $2499. Phenomenal pricing. It's the most affordable lineup we've ever had. Now, if you know some of the other things we've been up to lately, you know that just a week and a half ago, we updated the configuration of the white plastic 13-inch MacBook. So that has a slightly faster processor and bigger hard drive. So to complete the picture, we're also going to update the MacBook Air today as well with some more, even, com more aggressive uh, configurations and pricing. Now, a 1.8 gigahertz, it's a faster processor for just $1499. That's $300 less expensive than before. And if you like SSD, you can get a 128 gigabyte SSD config with a 2.13 gigahertz processor. That's $1799. And if you looked where we were just before this keynote started, that's $700 less expensive than the previous configuration. So these notebooks, they already were so far ahead of the competition in so many ways, and, and they just leap even further ahead now. And one of the areas they're far ahead, and we're really proud of this, is being environmentally friendly as well. All of these notebooks, and no one else can say this, every MacBook, every MacBook Pro, every MacBook Air meets the stringent EP Gold standard. That's really important for environmentally friendly design. And every one of them meets Energy Star version 5. That's the new version coming out this summer, and they already all meet that. And because of that, we're really proud to say this is the world's greenest lineup of notebooks. So great notebooks. Thank you. Amazing hardware. Products that our customers are really going to love and appreciate. And what does it deserve? Great hardware deserves great software. I think this audience knows that better than anyone. Great software. So to tell you what's going on with Mac OS X, I'd like to invite up Bertrand Serlet. Thanks, Phil. Good morning. Over the years, the feature set of Mac OS X has grown to an incredible portfolio. And our latest release, Leopard, is the most successful software product Apple has ever had, with features like CoverFlow in Finder, Quick Look, Time Machine. Our users really love it, and so does the press. It's by far the best operating system written for the vast majority of consumers. What a sharp contrast with what's been happening <laughs> up north. Here's the press again. Vista has failed to catch on with mainstream computer users, while businesses have shunned it outright. Indeed, Microsoft has dug quite a big hole for themselves with Vista. And they're trying to get out of it, with Windows 7. But underlying Windows 7, you have the same old technologies, DLLs, the registry, <laughs> disk defragmentation. No end user should ever have to know about that. <laughs> the user account control, that's the security subsystem that prevents your PC from being infested at the cost of tons of alerts. And in Windows 7, to address the alerts problem, even more complexity thrown upon the user. So that's Windows 7, same old technology as Vista. Fundamentally, it's just another version of Vista. We come out from such a different place we love Leopard. We're really happy how it has turned out. We're proud of Leopard. And so when it became time to think about the next big cat, we decided to name it 
Snow Leopard to build upon Leopard. And the challenge that we set for ourselves is to build a better Leopard. So what does that mean? Three things. First, lots of refinements across board. Second, powerful new technologies. And third, exchange support. So, let me to talk to each in turn. First, refinements. You know, Mac OS X is made up of a lot of projects, over a thousand projects. And for Snow Leopard, we've decided to refine over 90% of all those projects. So let me give you some examples. The Finder. We actually love the way the Finder is in Snow Leopard. And so for Snow Leopard, we did not change it, at least the user interface. What we did do is rewrite it using our modern toolbox, Coco, so that we are better positioned for the future. And <laughs> from that rewrite, there's lots of little benefits, lots of little touches that you'll start noticing once you, s <coughs> excuse me, once you start using Snow Leopard. Next, the dock. In Leopard, we added a beautiful 3D rendering for the dock. But I don't know about um, you, but my desktop sometimes has a little more clutter. And we've had a feature for the longest time on how to deal with clutter. It's called Exposé. So what we did is we've built Exposé into the dock. The way it works is you just click and hold on an app tile, et voila, you select the window you want. <laughs> Next installation. That's probably your first contact with Snow Leopard, and we've made it even faster, up to 45% faster. <laughs> but maybe more importantly, after you install Snow Leopard, you actually recover some disk space. Over. <laughs> over half the footprint of the US, over six gigabyte more space, thanks to technologies like file system compression. Preview. Preview is, of course, our favorite way to view images and PDF files, and we've made common operations faster. There's also lots of little touches. The one I like is um, about text selection in PDF files. In Leopard, you can actually select text and copy paste it into other applications. But it doesn't always follow the logical order of the text. In Snow Leopard, we've used a little bit of AI to actually infer the structure of the document. <laughs> Next, Chinese input methods. It can be cumbersome to enter a character, a Chinese character, with a keyboard. But you've got a trackpad. Why not use it? This is exactly what we did with Snow Leopard. You can draw with your finger. <laughs> and the computer picks the most appropriate character, even predicts the next character to come. Next, mail. Everyone uses mail. We've made it even faster, and quite a bit faster for common operations, as you can see. Next, Safari. We've been working on a new version of Safari called Safari 4, with features like top sites. It's been in beta for a couple of months, and I'm very proud to announce that today we are shipping Safari 4 for Leopard, Tiger, and Windows. <laughs> Safari 4 offers unsurpassed speed, speed for HTML and speed for JavaScript for your Web 2.0 web pages. This chart here shows the standard Sun, Sun Spider JavaScript benchmark, and the scale is multiples of IE8 speed. 
it's also very, very standard. In fact, the gold standard for <laughs> the, the ultimate test for standardness is the acid-free test, and it passes 100%. To put that in perspective, IE8 passes 21%. So Safari 4, of course, will also be available on Snow Leopard. It will be included in Snow Leopard. And in Snow Leopard, there's a couple extra features you don't get on the other platforms. The first is crash resistance. Let's say you browse the web, have quite a bit of state buildup. Well, let me tell you a little secret. The number one cause of crashes across all of Mac OS X is actually browser plugins. So if your plugin crashes in Snow Leopard, you just get this rectangle, but the rest of your windows are intact. <laughs> All you need to do is reload that page, and that's it. You haven't missed a beat in your browsing. The second feature that you get only on Snow Leopard is even more speed. You know the JavaScript benchmark I showed you a few slides ago? That's a 32-bit benchmark. When you run in 64-bit, you go even faster. And of course, we run application in 64-bit. Quick time. We have an all new Quick Time in Snow Leopard. We call it Quick Time 10. It's an old modern stack. It fully leverages hardware acceleration. It's super efficient. It's color correct. And we're debuting a new technology for streaming called HTTP streaming, because it's all based on standards, HTTP, AAC, H.264. It works with any web server, like an Apache server. It's really cool. So since we had such a change in the back end of QuickTime, we decided to also change the user interface of the QuickTime player. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, the contents is center stage. In fact, as you start playing, the on-screen controls, including the window title, go away to let you enjoy your contents. So what I'd like to do now is have you seen some of the features and little touches that we've added in Snow Leopard? And for that, I'd like to ask my colleague, Craig Federighi, VP of macOS Engineering, to demo to us some of the refinements. Right. Oh, you guys are too kind. All right. So, I'm going to cover three areas in the sneak peek of Snow Leopard, and we're going to start with Doc and the Finder. Now, one feature of the Doc is Stacks. Stacks makes it really easy to get quickly at your documents, 